Welcome back to the Print Lab. In this video, we will be going over how to prepare a file for making stickers. As far as artwork goes, you can make it in any program you'd like, whether it's Photoshop, Procreate, or Illustrator. But when you're ready to print your file, there are two options to prepare for. If you would like to hand cut your stickers, you can prepare your file the way you normally would for printing an image in the Print Lab. However, if you would like to kiss cut your stickers, and kiss cut is when you have a contour line around your sticker, there is some extra prep that goes into that. The first of which is adding cut lines to your design, and you want to do this in Adobe Illustrator. Now cut lines can be done in a few different styles. Two of those styles are full bleed, like this one, and bordered, like this one. Let's talk about bordered first. A bordered style is when you peel off the sticker, there is a little white border around the whole design. And there are a couple ways of doing this. You can simply create geometric shapes around your design like this, and then just use the align tool to make sure that it's centered. And you'll notice that for the cut line, I'm using a shape that has no fill and a small red stroke. It's helpful to understand that the settings of the fill and stroke don't really matter to the cutter. The cutter really only sees the path of the shape. So you could have an extra thick stroke like this, and the cutter would still only see this. The blade follows the path of the shape and it ignores how thick the stroke is. Now, if you would like your cut line to follow the contour of your design, there are a couple of techniques for that. You could use the pen tool and draw around your design, which looks something like this. But I actually like to use a technique called offset path. Let's use a copy of this design to demonstrate. The first thing to do is to create a copy of your design and paste it directly on top of the original. So I'll hit Command C for copy, and then I'll hit Command F for paste in front. Now you can see I have a copy on top. Now you need to merge the layers of the top copy into one shape. For that, I'll go to my properties panel, down to the pathfinder, and I'll select the first option, Unite. This method creates a cut path that is the exact same shape as the original design. Now to extend the cut line out away from your design, you'll go to Object, down to Path, and then Offset Path. You'll want to experiment with these settings a little bit to get the look you want. This path right here is the original size, so you can see what size border you're creating. I like the size of border that I have, but I don't like what's going on with the horns here. So I'm gonna come here and change miter to round, and then I'm gonna press okay. Now this leaves the original shape and leaves a copy that has been pushed out. We just need to delete the original, then switch this shape to a stroke. and it's ready for the next step. But before we move on, let's talk about the full bleed option. For that, I'll grab a copy of this design, and to do a full bleed design, what we need to do is take the outermost color and extend that out a ways so that we can cut into it. And to accomplish all that, we'll use the same offset path technique. We'll first copy the design, Command C, Command F, then with the top layer selected, merge all the layers into one shape, properties, pathfinder, unite. We'll worry about the exact color of this shape later. Now up to the object menu, path, offset path. I'll leave these settings and press OK. Now instead of deleting the original shape, I'll actually use it as the cut line and the larger shape I'll use as the extra bleed color. So I'll switch this shape to have no fill and a red stroke. And this larger shape I'll need to move all the way behind my design. So right click it, arrange, send it back. And I'll need to match the color of the larger shape with the outermost color of my design. So 
I'll grab the eyedropper tool and I'll just click on this color. So it'll print like this and then the cutter will cut here and I'll be left with this. And now this design is ready for the next step as well. For that, we need to download the sticker template from our website. And it's down near the services section, so I'll click on that, services. Scroll down a bit more and click here to download. If it doesn't download, sometimes what you need to do is right click the button and say save link as. Now we'll open the zip file and we'll have a vinyl sticker template AI file. We'll just open that up in Illustrator. There are a couple of things that are important about this template. First, you can only have one artboard per file. If you need to submit multiple designs, then create a new file per page instead of making more artboards in one file. Next, in the layers panel, it is very important to not touch these two layers. They are necessary for the registration marks and for the cutter to do its job. Next, we have this pink line. This is the printable area. It is a visual guide to keep you from placing your artwork too close to the registration marks and then confusing the cutter. And here you have the cut and design layers. I'll start by selecting the design layer, then going back to my design file. I'll select the designs that are ready and drag them to the template. I'll want to move my cut lines to the cut layer. So I'll select this one and this one. And then in the layers panel, I'll just come over here and grab this little square, which indicates the selected artwork. And I'll move that to the cut layer. So when we print your design, we'll turn off the cut lines and the printable area. We'll print this. Then when we go to cut your design, we'll turn the design layer off and turn the cut lines back on and send the file like this. So now what I need to do to get ready is I need to resize my artwork. So I'll select this and move it over there, maybe make it a little bit smaller. And I want multiples of this design, so I will copy and paste like that. And let's get this to fit within the printable area. And I'll make another line. Okay. And for this one, we'll make this a little bit smaller. And to maximize the cutting area, what I'll do is I'll duplicate this one, but I'll rotate it. And kind of fit it in there like that. And I'm cutting into this bleed area, so I could probably even have them touch. So it doesn't really matter if they touch. And then I'll copy these two and move them over here. Again, we'll have the edges touch because it doesn't matter. It's the cut line that matters. So we'll do that. And then duplicate that. Okay, and I'll get rid of this one. Let's grab these three and maybe center that with these guys. Grab all of those and make sure it fits within the printable area. And we can move you up. And now my file is ready to submit to the print lab. I'll hit save as, file, save as. We'll call it Carlos Stickers. And now I'm ready to drop it into the print station. I hope that helped and that you learned something new. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.